So welcome to everyone. I'm really delighted to have this opportunity to explain to you and describe to you our master's course in international health and tropical medicine here um, in, uh, in the Center for Tropical Medicine and Global Health at the University of Oxford. So our vision on the course is to develop an international network of global health leaders collaborating to advance sustainable intersectoral solutions to address persistent and emerging public health challenges. In other words, we're, we're, very, we're a master's course that's looking to um, equip candidates who do want to address these persistent global health challenges and we want to send them back out after the master's program to devise sustainable and creative solutions and work together across a broad spectrum of disciplinary backgrounds, um, experiences professionally and cultural backgrounds. Our team is made up of a very diverse set of colleagues from across the university and we draw teaching from across the wide range of professional um, researchers in the Center for Tropical Medicine and Global Health, in particular across our Africa and Asian programs. So we do bring teachers in to teach our students. Our students do come from a very diverse set of backgrounds, as mentioned. There are, um, they represent different disciplines coming from uh, medical backgrounds and medical practice, but as well uh, disciplines ranging from sociology to engineering to anthropology. So really creative ways in which people have used their disciplinary backgrounds and have been applying that in the field of global health. We do require at least one year of experience um, in order to be able to bring that wealth of expertise for the peer-led um, learning that occurs on the course. A little bit more about the course and its structure. So we have three terms over the course of the one year program. The first term, we tackle subjects such as paradigms and tools for global health. So paradigms and tools is basically saying, what are the different kinds of methodologies that you as future global health leaders will need to be able to engage with in order to be able to um, understand the challenges and be able to devise creative solutions for them. So we have topics such as epidemiology, statistics, but we also have qualitative and mixed methods. We have introductions to health economics, as well as finance and management. In the challenges and change in international health module, we have classes that touch on different types of health challenges as they manifest in resource limited contexts and the kinds of solutions that work, but as well what solutions don't work and why, and thinking through those types of, of, of ways in which um, that they may be addressed. We don't aim to cover all the diseases that we could possibly have in our various contexts because that would just simply take too much time. Rather, we, we take diseases that um, provide examples of the ways in which we can begin to consider creative solutions. The Global Health Research and Practice module contains a number of different elements that are really key to, again, um, building the capacity for global health leadership. And in particular, we cover um, issues such as ethics in public health practice and research and health systems and health systems research, but as well the health system issues that are very relevant to, to devising solutions. Underlying all of the academic year, we have a leadership management and community communication training program. And this is the soft skill development. This is important because it's not just enough to know how to generate evidence or critically engage with that evidence, but it's how you communicate that evidence in order to be able to affect change. And we look at communicating that evidence to different audiences. These are public audiences via the media or other modalities, but as well looking at policy audiences, academic audiences, 
um, and so forth. We do do provide um, debate training and we have trainers who are um, Oxford debaters um, and we provide um, opportunities to develop policy briefs and go to the UK Houses of Parliament and present those policy briefs. So these are just some examples of the kinds of activities that will help increase confidence, but also increase the skills of how do you um, communicate your messages. In addition, in the leadership and management training, we have negotiation training, we have stakeholder management workshops, et cetera. Again, as part of understanding that what we expect our, our graduates to be doing and what types of skills that they will need to be able to operate most effectively in those spaces of leadership. In the second term, we have a set of modules that you see here ranging from vaccinology, the cutting edge of, of vaccine development, to reproductive maternal newborn child health, mathematical modeling and in infectious diseases, health innovation and entrepreneurship, international development and health, as well as development environment and health, the latter of which we share with the School of Geography and Environment. So these modules allow, uh, we students choose, so you don't, you don't take all of them, you don't have time to take all of them. It's a very condensed and very intensive course. So students choose two modules to take um, with an option to audit, as we say, the third module if they are able to manage their time. And this allows a more in-depth investigation of a particular topic of interest to candidates. In addition, during the second term, there's a lot of those leadership and management elements and a lot of group work and group activities that the students undertake. And they will also be preparing during that second term for their third term placement. Because in the third term, our students go out and we send the students out into the field to undertake a, a, a research placement, as we call it. So you do some work in another resource limited setting and different from the one that you have experience in. And we like to send our African students to Asia, our Asian students to Africa and so forth in order to extend and expand the experiences that our students gain on the course. So during the second term, students will be preparing for their placement projects and preparing for proposals that they then um, go on to work on during the two months of their third term. After the third term, students come back um, having experienced um, all the wealth of interactions that they are able to engage with on that placement. And they return to Oxford for a week of engagements and media training, and then having um, time to write up 10,000 word dissertation that's related to their research placement project that they undertook in the third term. This is just an example of um, the, our current cohort to give you the sense of diversity that we do bring onto our course. Now our requirement is at least one year of experience in a resource limited context after having finished your studies. So it is working experience in these particular contexts. Most of our successful candidates come with far more than one year of experience. And as you can see from the slide, they come from very disciplinary backgrounds, as well as representing a broad geography. And this is very similar um, in, in our previous year's cohorts. We are currently, this is our eighth cohort, and we're just completing recruitment for our ninth cohort. Um, so we are a relatively young course, um, but building on a lot of experience from other courses across the university and elsewhere. A lot of the learning on the MSc in international health and tropical medicine happens through interaction with this incredibly diverse and rich cohort. So a lot of structured peer learning activities and group activities that allow you to learn from each other just as much as you learn from the academics and professionals who are teaching you. And again, our, our teachers 
come from themselves a very diverse set of backgrounds and with very rich experiences on the ground in resource limited contexts. We are very proud to have been awarded a number of awards over the years. And these are mostly teacher um, student led awards for our teachers. Um, we have seven Oxford Student Union teaching awards, four medical science division teaching awards, two public engagement awards, and that list is growing. So we're, we're very pleased to not just um, ourselves be talking about how good the course is, but our students repeatedly um, relay to us that they appreciate both the content and the ways in which the course has been developed. I should outline that the course is always changing. We're always evolving to, in order to be able to stay on top of what is relevant, but as well the modalities of teaching that are going to be most effective and useful for our students. We keep very close contact with our alumni. And as you'll see on our website, they, we do have a very large family now of our alumni spanning quite a number of different countries. So we, we do um, continue to engage them. Our alumni come back and engage with our current students. They teach on the course, they deliver seminars, they facilitate workshops. So they are still integral to our course and the ways in which we develop. So I encourage you to ask any questions you may have in the Q&A box, and I, I look forward to hearing from you. So thank you very much. <laughs>